Welcome everyone. Today we're going to have a look at the new features released in Wonderland Engine 120. That's the biggest release Wonderland has ever released so far and there's a bunch of super interesting stuff here. Stick around to the end because we're going to also show you how to create custom plugins for Wonderland Engine. Let's hop right into Wonderland Engine. You can see I am using the new 120 here. Let's start with one of the most visually pleasing features. In this case we're having a look at the post processing because the post processing now allows you to use features like a bloom filter or tone mapping in Wonderland Engine. You can use them for web games, even on iOS Safari. You will find the settings to enable these post-processing filters in Views, Project Settings, and then in Rendering, you have a new option, Bloom. And you can play around with the settings here to increase or decrease the Bloom effect. So we can, for example, set the threshold very high, then only the very, very brightest pixels, which are barely any here, are going to be uh, blooming, or we can set it down to something really low, then basically every pixel is going to create a bloom. We can also turn down the intensity or turn it up really, really high. The tone mapping is controlled via the tone mapping settings. In this case, we're using an ACES approximated tone mapping, which is a more efficient version of the ACES tone mapping. But you can see there's only a slight visual difference. We also implemented Reinhard or exponential tone mapping. All right, off to the next feature. The next feature I'm going to show you is our extremely efficient implementation of morph targets. Here you can see the GLTF morph target stress test. Now if we go ahead and select this mesh and then find the morph target properties in the mesh component down below here, we can open up the weights and find a bunch of different weights here. These weights control the morphing, the blending of one state of a mesh into another. In this case, the one state looks like this and the second state looks like this. So each of these little boxes has a different morph target that allows us to blend in between different shapes or different states or attributes of this mesh. We can change every one of these individually. And if we run this, we have some code that even animates these morph targets. All our examples are also on GitHub. So you'll find them on Wonderland Engine slash Wonderland minus engine minus examples, Wonderland dash engine dash examples. These morph targets are usually created in Blender. So you might create it in Blender, export it via GLTF, and then import it into here and Wonderland Engine will automatically find the morph targets and generate these properties here. You can change morph target weights from code as well. That will require you to get the mesh component and then find the morph targets property on the mesh component. And from then on, you can just set the weights for all of these morph targets. Even before 1.2.0, Wonderland Engine had support for global illumination environment probes. In 1.2.0 though, we greatly expanded on this support and added also support for HDRI environments. So for environments with high dynamic range. You can find the settings for global illumination probes in views, project settings, and then find the environment in the rendering tab. Here we have an HDR image, but you may also use EXR images. And we can bake the environment from here. You can also set a tint for the environment, which will give you full creative control over the look and feel of your scene. Uh, additionally, you have an option here to uh, control the maximum size of the specular environment that allows you to support lower end devices more easily. You will notice that the background here is also using the HDRI environment. That is because we added support for our sky shader to sample environments as well. You will find that in views, resources, pipelines, select the sky and then select environment probe. To select the blurriness of the background, you can change the MIP in the material settings of the sky. All right, let's move on. Wonderland Engine 120 comes with a lot of improvements on its animation support, not only on the editor side, but also just generally being able to support more animation features. This example shows animation events. If we find our reload animation in views, animation editor, select the AK reload 
animation and then select the root. We will find that this has an event track. The event track allows you to receive callbacks in JavaScript to react to certain points in the animation. For example, if we have this reload animation, we have a specific point in time where the magazine connects to the gun in which we want to trigger a certain reload state. So if we preview this animation, it would be now. And this point we can set in our event track to then receive a callback in JavaScript to set the state. So that would be this reload event here. So you can set the certain time of the reload event and then the name of the reload event that you will receive in JavaScript. Let's have a look at the code for this. Okay, so in the code here, you can see that we are getting an animation component and the animation component has a new on event property. The on event property is an emitter that we can add callbacks to. In this case, we have an on draw event or we have an on reload event that we want to listen to. Now the on event is going to be called for any event regardless of its name. So if we move here, we will see that the on reload event first checks that the name for the event is actually the reload event. And if not, it just doesn't do anything, but otherwise it will set the state for the reload. So it will make sure that the magazine is full. Let's have a quick look at what this looks like in the browser. We can see, we can draw the weapon, we can shoot with the weapon, we can reload the weapon, and we can even reload cancel but the reload state will already have been set. And then we can holster the weapon again. So if you're interested in this example, uh, again, it is on GitHub, you will find it there. Animation events are not the only feature that we added in 1.2.0. We also added support for animation blending. Now animation blending is usually used to have smooth transitions between various animations or merging various animations together. You can see here the character in our center is just idling. He's moving and now we want to have him wave. In the animation component, we now have a list of animations. Here we have animation one and animation two. How much we see of each animation is controlled via the blend factor. If we change the blend factor, it will gradually transition over to the waving animation. We can show this by just gradually moving back to zero. So let's check this out in the browser. If we press F, it will smoothly transition. And if we press F again, it will smoothly transition back. You can use this also to transition from running to walking, from idle to walking and running, and all these uh, more advanced animation controls. As we continue to develop 1.2.0, we will probably add more animation features like supporting root motion, eventually animation graphs and state machines as well. A new and exciting feature in 1.2.0 is prefab instancing. So we now allow creating separate project files that you may want to call it prefab. We will open one here. You can see this is just a shape. It has a random mesh component on it. So it allows just automatically randomly selecting a mesh, but this could be anything. This could be a full zombie character. This could be an enemy. It could be the character itself. And you can now instantiate this project file into this scene. This example run in the browser greatly demonstrates that we can just click and it will select a random mesh with a random rotation because it is loading in the background the other Wonderland engine project and it will create an instance of this. Wonderland engine 120 also comes with scene switching and other APIs you can use from JavaScript. And I will quickly show you the code of what it looks like to create such an instance of a prefab. Basically, you start by loading a prefab in this case from a prefab URL that is predefined as prefab.bin. Once the prefab is loaded, we just assign it to the underscore prefab variable. And from then on, we can use this.scene.instantiate to instantiate the prefab as many times as we want. And in this case, it instantiates the prefab and then immediately sets the position to our cursor position. Finally, 
A very experimental feature in Wonderland Engine 1.2.0 is support for custom plugins. You can now write your own plugins in JavaScript or TypeScript. And here's a quick example of such a plugin. This Sketchfab plugin allows you to search for models on Sketchfab. And in the future, you may even import the models from here and then have them automatically added to your scene. All of this is controlled via JavaScript via plugins that lie in the plugins folder. If you want to build your own plugin, you would just create a plugins folder, right click and click new plugin. And that would allow you to show off the plugins feature. Make sure to have the Wonderland Editor JavaScript plugin API installed. And plugins are just simple classes that come with a draw function that allow you to draw the entire UI show what this plugin looks like, we are going to go to project settings, move down to the plugin section. And if you haven't done so already, enable plugin execution, and then enable the show of plugin from here. All right, finally, marvel at the redesigned UI of the editor. You will notice that the debug menu has moved over here where you can find the overdraw visualization, for example. You can now also toggle lights on and off. And finally, the render type like the mesh visualization is to be found at the top here. We'll also note that the objects now no longer scroll away the search. There have been a multitude of little changes throughout the entire editor to just make working with it just ever so slightly more convenient. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the features in 1.2.0. There's many that I wasn't able to cover in this video. If you're interested in what else we did for 1.2.0, have a look at the 1.2.0 release changelog on our website at wonderlandengine.com slash news slash release 1.2.0 and you'll find a full list of everything we did here.